Hello, and welcome to a very special episode of Vernissage of the Court. My name is Lucas Montana. I'm the artist for Fabled Court. Tonight we're continuing on the Witch's Cauldron uh, image that we've been working on the last couple weeks. Uh, tonight's episode is pre-recorded. Uh, currently, I am in the process of teaching a painting class. Um, so, yeah, we're painting a pumpkin. Um, I don't know how well it'll go. I'm sure it's fine. But I always feel anxious when it comes up to when I, when I have to do a class. But anyway, with that said, uh, let's get into the work. So, uh, since last time, I have had the opportunity to work on some more of the kit. Um, some pieces that helped to refocus the direction in which this was going. And I realized some things specifically. So I've already turned off the uh, background layer that we specced out uh, last time um, to give you a preview of what I intended for it, uh, knowing that the actual direction may not be the same. So uh, tonight we're going to change some directions on this. Um, a huge part of what I wanted for the kit was a low saturation, low contrast um, kind of look, a little bit more... Kind of a pastel or what have you uh, but the theme was night and night colors so this currently is going to see a lot of changes tonight uh so let's get to it so first off uh last week i had done this sh extra shading um and i've played around with some stuff si since then and i need to make some changes but before we get into that uh, I do want to address that I did go back and add some ambient shading to her. And so what's what I'm going to do is essentially going to delete this layer. And uh, this stuff that we did here, adding all this sh uh, shadow to this to the Elder, is essentially going out. Uh, I'm not going to continue with that. Um, the reason being is that... Uh, it does not do what I need it to. Whoops. The fill tool is still... Oh. Um. Okay. Anyway. Uh, so I don't need that information. I didn't actually have to just delete it though. So let's just not delete it as I may come back later and do something with it. What that is, no idea. But essentially this layer here is going to go away. I'm not going to delete it. I'm just going to turn it off. So what I'm going to do now is going to add some shading to the cauldron here. And then we'll move on to doing some of the more uh, interesting bits. Oh, I missed some thing here. So go back into the flats layer and deselect an area that I don't want to be that way. And then turn the shading layer back on so I can sample this color. Brush is too small. Um, I'm going to select the cauldron, come back to the ambient layer. I'm going to deselect some areas. I'm holding down the alt key. I held down the alt key when I put my pen to the canvas so that I could subtract from my selection with the lasso tool. And now while I'm using that, I'm holding the alt key. to uh, bring out the polygonal lasso tool. Okay, so I deselect this high area so it doesn't get hit with the ambient shading that I'm adding. And now I'm gonna deselect the high area on this upper lip of the cauldron. Um. Hmm, 
Okay. We're going to activate the history brush or history state there. Um, I'm going to make this nice and big and then just add some shading. I'm aiming at this bottom part here. Uh, so my color is going to completely fill the top part. Whoa, what happened there? What did happen there? Hmm. There was white. I'm going to fill this middle section. So it brings back a little bit more color. And then we're going to activate the history brush by pressing Y. And then coloring over this top upper section. And then we're going to go back to the lasso tool, holding down Alt to subtract this bottom section from the selection. I'm going to activate a new history state. I'm going to bring my brush back in. We're going to make it smaller. I'm going to aim for this smaller second lip. Oops, still got the white on. I'm going to zoom in here. So this is actually the second time I'm recording. Uh, when I tried the first time, it was like only three minutes. When I tried the first time, uh, I came into Photoshop and my scroll to zoom wasn't working. So all I have to do is hold alt and then hold a button on the pen and then scrub back and forth. Uh, that's called scroll to zoom. Oh, I guess I didn't need the history section. I thought it was going to be messier with the brush. But anyway, um, so I'm going to hold alt to activate uh, the subtraction, subtract from selection option on the lasso tool and then hold alt again once it, the lasso started let go of okay i have to hold alt to activate that little minus that you see on the cursor and then once i start with the brush i can let go of the alt key and then press it down again and then it turns into lasso mode or uh, polygonal lasso mode so then i can just tap on the screen and it will create a selection in the between the points um, so I'll go ahead and activate a new history brush selection, and then I'm going to scroll back out, or zoom back out. Make this a little bit larger. Hit this lip again. So the idea here is to try to sell you on the idea that the, the lip here, the surface beneath is curved. It's concaved, like what you see on the profile there. Um, so the darker area is going to be closer toward the top. Come back with white and kind of make this a little bit more subtle. Uh, deselect that, go back to the flats layer, select the whole cauldron. And what I'm going to do is create a roll off on either side. So the sides are darker and make the middle lighter to give you a better sense of a, a three dimensional kind of wrap. Whoops, got the white selected. That doesn't help me. Definitely need it bigger and softer. That second one is what I was aiming for. Got to commit to it. Now come back through the middle, lighten it up the middle a little bit to create a little bit more contrast. And then make this smaller. Bring this over here so the high points are a little bit more pronounced from the deeper points. Okay. Uh, I think that's good for that. So, um, what was the next step? The next step was to adjust the color. So the color's not correct. So if we come down here to the bottom washi, I'm gonna sample the blue from the sky there, and we're going to drag it over the top here. Um, so what that's going to do is going to flatten our colors and it's gonna kind of tint them. Now I could, 
I could adjust the colors using the hue saturation uh, tool. But what the, all that's going to do is going to keep the same values and change them. What I need to do is flatten the values. It's also going to help desaturate the colors. Uh, so I'm going to select that. Make this brush nice and large. And then press 5 to drop the opacity down to 50%. And just kind of lightly brush over the characters here. See a lot of the saturation has already been sapped out of them. And everything feels a lot cooler. Uh, cooler in terms of temperature. Uh, color temperature. So that feels like they're in, in nighttime. Now, the problem is, is that the background does not feel like that's the case. So I'm going to do the same thing to it. Make everything nice and cool. The idea here is that they are essentially being lit by uh, maybe moonlight that's pouring in from above the cauldron. And that's where these uh, the, this ambient color is coming from. So now that everything's cooler, it feels like they're in a more uh, in a darker scene. So what I'm going to do is hmm. Oh, okay. So I'm going to activate the history on this, and then I'm going to on the shading layer uh, come back. Mm, nope. On the shading layer, come back with the larger brush. And I'm going to do what I did last week and kind of work in the darkness back here to pull it further away from the characters in the front. The lower amount of cons. Uh, what is it? Contrast. Lower the contrast of the background. Lower the contrast of the background so the characters in the front pop out a little bit more. We're going to do some more stuff to the characters. They'll pop out just fine. But I definitely want to push it here. Because your focus is not supposed to be on the stuff in the background. Focus is supposed to be on the stuff in the foreground, the characters and the cauldron. Uh, like I said, there's going to be some stuff that's going to help pull them out. But um, we'll get to that in a little bit. So right now I'm switching over to the history brush by pressing Y. I'm going to hold down control and the left bracket. I'm going to reduce the softness or the hardness of the brush. Um, and because of this history state here, we're going to be returning to this color anywhere that I put the brush to. So I'm, whoa, that's way too hard. Um, that I think just turns us to the brush tool. Yes. Um, so we're going to change that to 20 opacity on the history brush. There we go, it's much better. I'm just going to select a few things to kind of uh, give them a little bit more three dimension. Make them look like they are rounding off. I added some more ambitions for this uh, jar up here, but honestly, I don't think it's really worth it to. Pull that out, and I may I may do that sometime in the future. Uh, if I decide to uh, work on something like an HD version or like a re-release, because a lot of these kits are made very quickly, with very little time, uh, owing to our current production schedule. Uh, 
uh, that production schedule itself being owed to needing to just uh, pull the trigger and go. Uh, but with the new year, we're hoping to change some things about how we have stuff scheduled out, and I should be given a lot more time to complete a kit. So I'm not sitting there working until like 4 o'clock in the morning. Or 6 o'clock in the morning on some occasions. I don't even remember which kit that was that I was working that late for. What am I looking at? Okay. The jar with like a rope around it. And just to give this, because like, uh, like you saw last week, we're going to pull the focus on this. And you're not going to see any of that. Oh, deselect. Reselect the shelf here. And then with the history brush, pull the shelf forward, the shelf, the edge of the shelf forward. Okay. So going up here to the start of the history state. And then back down here. That looks a lot more interesting. So, I'm going to take this background copy. I'm going to throw it in garbage. I'm going to take the group and duplicate it. Then I'm going to right click on it. And then merge group. Turn it into a single solid layer. And I'm going to drop, drop that back in the background folder. Um, and then filter blur Gaussian blur and or let's see what two looks like what well, three Okay, or looks good. Okay, so that's essentially the background. I believe that's done now. So this screen, as you can see in the, the hand cam, there's a lot of glare on it from uh, the lights above me that you can't really see and the lights around me. Uh, so I'm just looking at the uh, primary screen on OBS to see what this looks like. Also, my main monitor has a different color temperature or color saturation, has different saturation than uh, the tablet here. Um, so what do I need to do next? Next, I need to um, figure out what's going on with the cauldron here. So I'm going to create a new layer and we'll call it effects for now it'll get a more clear name later if something should if i need it to do something particular <sighs> i'm just going over the list of other boxes i need to do i think the only other effect i have is fire but with that said um what am I trying to do with this layer? I think I'm going to take... Oh, before I forget, I'm going to turn back over to the history brush and turn this back to 100% and harden the edges on it. Mm, excuse me. Take this nice light blue and... Uh, Gonna kind of get some little wisps. Hmm. 
Okay. I'm gonna select that and control shift select the ink and come back here with the brush and quickly deselect the ink around the characters the line work is specifically what it is and then come back in here a little bit closer get rid of these bits that are connected to the cauldron layer I'm just going to delete that way it looks like it's coming out of the cauldron instead of around it what am I trying to select here there we go invert my selection I'm just trying to get rid of this bit up here and I don't need to it's going to be outside of everything but uh I like things to appear nice and neat. The only thing I allow outside of it is the sketch and line work. Uh, just for the sake of follow through. So this is on top of them and it goes over that appearing to be more in the, involved in the scene as it is. I'm going to select that as a... I'm going to control select the preview of that to select all the pixels that are on it. And I'm just going to add a little bit more defined uh, white edges to it. There we go. Um, so, I don't think I need to give this a something like a screen. No, that's not really where the light's coming from. But I do want to do something else. Uh, I'm going to create a new layer. Call it Glow. We'll rename Effects to Smoke. Uh, rename it to Cauldron Smoke. So, with the Glow layer... Uh... I want to start lighting them up. This could be almost any color. But the mandate for the thing is... Uh, cool colors. Um, select the face. Excuse me. Enough. 
contiguous, and then select her skin. Control H to hide the selection outline. I'm going to deselect. Maybe a little bit more loose with what I'm trying to color here. Just everyone pay a significant amount of attention to her face. So there's a pretty large amount of difference between how you sh uh, color a youthful face versus an older face. And honestly, it's a lot more fun to color an older person's face or shade on an older person's face. They've got so many more facets uh, to their face that makes it a lot more interesting to look at and to observe from an artist's perspective. Whereas a young face, you have to be careful on where you put the things because uh, too much detail in the wrong place and there's a gnat flying around. And uh, the person looks old or older than maybe your intention was.
but then too little detail in. You can't really read the dimensions of their face. So pretty much any face that's going to be facing toward this cauldron is going to receive some amount of whoop, some amount of light spill on it. And amount of subtlety is important. So I'm placing these highlights in places uh, where the closer it is, the more intense it's going to be, so directly over it, so her hat, the underside of her hat, and uh, their arms are going to receive the most amount of light because they're directly in the half of that glow coming from the cauldron. So, I've been working with, with the, the layer style in normal, uh, just so I could see have a better idea of where my uh, color is going. So I can try to be at least a little neat with this. This is a very soft brush, which means it has... Uh, uh, the edges of it are feathered, so it can spread out and replicates kind of a glowing appearance a little bit more. So as cool as this looks, it's going to look a little bit better when I can get some colors on it. So I'm going to make my brush a little bit smaller so I can get a little bit uh, higher intensity highlights, especially on small things like these braids here. So a lot of like the line work on her face, on the, uh, the elder's face, is uh, been kind of obscured because of the intensity of this glow effect. And that's fine. Um, I, like I said, I'm sorry to mention there. Uh, I'm going to be changing the uh, blending style on the layer so it could better reflect uh, what uh, the, the, what I'm going for here. Like, because I don't want it to actually cover over the lines. It something like. That. Uh, it's on top of the line work, so it's still going to affect it, but 
Uh, not multiplying. Uh, I don't think it was screen either. Overlay. That looks good. Well, hard light. Vivid light. Whoa, that's electrifying. Like it lights up the back of my brain. This one really plays with the colors that are happening, but I need it to be a little bit more consistent. Because what's happening over her bill, the, or the her hat, is it's turning purple. And it looks like a different color on her than it is her. On the crown, uh, the elder versus the uh, apprentice. Linear light. Now we can get a little bit messier, a little bit more broad with this. Really intensify that glow. Really make it feel like it's alive. And I end up going with linear light. And now, that's nice and intense. It's a little much. So I'm going to change the fill. The opacity. Honestly, they're both the same. Um, so the difference between fill and opacity is that changing the fill reduces the amount of opacity that the layer itself has and does not impact any attached effects or other layers that are attached to it whereas opacity will change everything that's attached to it um i don't know if there's like any other nuances to that but um let's try 75 percent and let's see what 50 does Feel like that's nice and subtle uh subtle to fit within the context of the low contrast thing and then move the template lines and turn off the sketch layer well i think it might be done crazy I actually thought it would take a little bit longer to get here. So that's about 40 minutes. Come on, first. Give me a sip of my bevy. Um, wow. I mean, looking at on this screen is one thing, but seeing it on the main monitor over here. It's, uh, it's nice. So. We started with this. And we're ending with this. So, when this gets cut apart, um, there's going to be a small bit of uh, either side on the bleed outside of the things. But then, once they're put together, uh, they should be seamless. And I'm really excited to see how that turns out. Um, there's, there's going to be problems that are like, might not be completely married up and that's fine. Uh, with new things come experimentation, comes different, uh, trials, but, um, let's see what else we can do. Um, so I'm not leaving you with an early episode first. Let's save. Always got to do that. Very important. Um, so 
give me a moment to pull up the uh, outline for this kit. Oh, whoa. Why are you over there? About to dive into sensitive information. Don't need to share that with everybody. I mean, it's as sensitive as... Hey! We're using Google Docs. So we can all jump on this and... And do the things together. Um, I figure we'll go over one of the patterns. Or we'll do some patterns, or maybe all of them. I don't know. We'll see how far we get. So... Uh, patterns going to be twinkling star. Let's do that. That one's really quick and easy. Well, why'd you jump all the way down there? I didn't even. What? Okay. So, what do I need to do? I need to turn ambient into normal so I can collect some colors. And I'm gonna turn this to flat slayer. I said marquee. Why aren't you? There we go. Flat Slayer. And we're going to grab this color. Press X and grab this color. Return to our space. Grab the fill tool. Whoops, wrong color. Fill it with the right color. Um. So while this is still selected... Grab my brush, go up to ambient shading layer, and make that nice and big. Press X to swap colors, and, oh, turn this back to multiply. And now with that vibrant lavender, just kind of give this a soft gradient from one color to the next. Now we're going to turn lavender. Nice and soft. Whoops. Oh well, <clears throat> that's fine. Um. Oh, I did this backwards. Okay. Turn that to normal, and I'm going to delete what I have here in the middle. Reacquire my colors. Get out of here. Okay, so I'm going to collect, select this Kyle bonus chunky charcoal brush. I'm going to explode it. Make it nice and big. And then I'm just going to make a bunch of huge, messy splotches over my workspace here. Going for a vaguely consistent thing, and then I'm going to go back around with the blue, and then re-dab and dot all over the place until I'm left with a smattering of white specks that are nondescript, have no real uniformity but create an interesting um, negative space of blue <laughs> oh excuse me
I think unlike everything else, I'm going to go the opposite way with the gradient. Um, so. Um, I really haven't figured out a better, cleaner way uh, to do that, but it's quick enough. Uh, so I'm not like particularly worried about it. So now that's on the color. Hello. Now we're on the ambient. Pushing down harder on the brush as I get to the top. Softer on the brush, letting go, and then applying another layer. Getting a little bit lighter with the touch as I move down. Letting go and putting down another layer up here. Now we're going to turn that back to ambient, or sorry, multiply, and it's got a nice level of darkness to it. And then I'm going to get a smidge darker and just do that. Oops. All right. I think that's one pattern down. Um, I'll get notes. But for now, that's what we got. I'm going to pull up Marquee and start on this next one. What is going on? There we go. Uh, as I hold down the space bar with uh, the Marquee tool, I can move the what I'm trying to select around. And it wasn't doing that. Um, so what was the next one? The row of brooms. So I need my sketch layer. Going to press D to default my controls. Going to collect, select the sharp brush tool. Going to reduce my brush size down to like 40 or whatever. Now, what was I, what did, what did, what did I say what I was going to do with the brooms? Um, first. Going to look up some brooms. This is legitimate. I only have interest in drawing one broom. Um, let's do a more pointed search and look for a witch broom. Ooh, much more interesting. So here's the deal. I don't need to get too complicated on this. However, for the sake of variety, I think I will draw different brooms. Um, so, right here, right here, just kind of haphazardly putting brooms down. Hmm. Um, so, first off, I do want to uh, do something similar to what she's got going here. Obviously, it's more of a cane here, but I figure she transmutes it into a broom.
kind of a crooked broom. Um... Room made of intertwined ivy or vines, maybe. And then The bristles are just more vines. Um, hmm. So this is this is something where it'd be nice to have uh, someone's input. One of those things where I could get ideas from my audience. Um. Oh. Why am I on shopping? That's weird. It wouldn't be too much of a stretch for there to be another 
make sure that's the case. Oh. Then <laughs> these are going to get cut off anyway. Um, I definitely want to replace this one with that. Okay. And one made of intertwined vines and one made out of a flower. Okay. So now I'm going to reduce some brush size. What's up here? <sighs> Whoops. What did I just do? I don't know. All right, we're at an hour. Right about now, my painting class should be done, and I should be cleaning up.
I wonder how it went. I mentioned before we're painting pumpkins. Uh, I run a uh, frame shop, but I also am an uh, art teacher or a painting class teacher. <laughs> Just simple pumpkins in an empty or in kind of a, a white void. I think uh, this particular pattern is literally just going to be uh, flat colors. Maybe a little bit of a gradient underneath them to give them the idea, the impression of um, uh, the impression of some distance between them in the background, uh, kind of a drop shadow. Yeah, okay. I really like how these brooms are coming out. Mm-hmm. 
a weird card face in the, in the end of it. Whether or not that's actually readable, don't know. Uh, I don't imagine this will be the last we see of these witches. Especially considering how much work I've put into their design. Uh, I think these characters have been kind of living in my head for a minute. Let's, uh... There we go. Got there eventually. What did your thing look like? It was two wraps. A tie and a string of beads. I think these characters have been looming in my head for a minute. I didn't know what they looked like. I didn't know what they were about. But I definitely think we'll see them again. And, um... I didn't get to show you this. Because I haven't drawn it yet. Um, but they do have a connection other things within Fabled Court. I think it'll be kind of exciting to see how that plays out. Focusing on details you'll never see. Uh, specifically what I mean is that blue line is right there, so that's the cutoff point. So you'll never see that there's a continuing crisscross feel there. But I'll be able to see it when I come back to reference this when I have to draw their brooms again, because here's the deal. Uh, I drew these witches down here. They all are riding on straight brooms. None of these brooms make an appearance, because clearly I'm drawing this after having drawn the other one. But... 
none of the rest of it would have been possible without having drawn that in the first place because that was my uh, what is it i i forget what it's called now but the only thing that comes to mind is a reference sheet a style guide it was my it serves as my style guide I don't know what's going on with this room. Uh, this one's just nondescriptly curved for some reason. Uh, so I'm just going to leave it at that. Anyway, so there's that. Come down here for the flats. I'm going to fill that with a white. So now all you see is the line layer. Um, Selection here. So I'm hoping that this pattern in particular will be able to work out um, vertical like it is right now or horizontal. And so that's definitely one of the inspirations behind I flat coloring. Just need to figure out what kind of colors it's going to be. Uh, like I said earlier or mentioned earlier. Uh, the design for this is uh, cool colors, night colors. So in particular, this ivy one um, and the flower one are going to kind of suffer for it. Uh, the rest of them will suffer too because wood tends to be a warm color. My tablet's trying to crawl away from me. Uh, green is a cool color, but is not within the color scheme of the kit. 
A... So I guess that's where my concern is. Concern's too strong of a word. Uh, ponderance, I guess. I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do as part of my next step. As a consequence of me uh, doing a teaching class, uh, doing a painting class, I actually get to go into work late. Dang it. Uh, so every once in a while, uh, the lasso tool will kind of uh, flip out and complete a selection for you. Uh, I don't know if it's like a, a processing error or if I just slipped up and made a mistake in my the way I press the buttons because uh, as I swap back and forth between polygonal lasso and uh, regular lasso tool I'm pressing and depressing the alt button and if I don't do it the right way I will lose my current selection as I'm making it and it will just autocomplete and uh, make a selection based on what I've already traced out. <laughs> um, so I don't know if it's like a processor issue or whatever. But anyway, as a consequence of me having a teaching class, um, I actually go into work late on Friday, which means I'll be able to work longer Thursday night on this kit, trying to get it ready for Friday's release. Um, at this point, I'm not for sure how how far I'll get. Um, still early days, but I really like it. Okay, saving. Now, what am I doing with color? So I actually don't want the brooms themselves to be particularly colorful. The reason being is that if this gets cut horizontally, you're going to end up with these weird cross sections where it's just kind of nondescript uh, wooden poles or something, if you could even infer that from some of them. I mean, the context of the rest of the bits that end up going through the layout as you put it down should fill the gaps in on what they are. Um, but with that being said, I do want them to have some kind of visual interest element uh, with the background behind them. So I think I'm going to have the rooms themselves be a low contrast in terms of their colors. But I don't know. But anyway, um, so I want to select this and then pick a brown of some kind. We'll just throw all of it there. I guess it's better. I'm going to draw a selection on the viney one. And we'll go ahead and get the rose one too.
two. Let's colorize that one. Looks to be the same color. A yellowish green instead of a the more vibrant green. flower will actually end up being that color whenever we see this again. visual interest in this one the wrong tool selected.
Okay. Okay, so I don't like what I'm looking at. Okay, why do you keep on doing that?
On the bottom of this rose broom, this flower broom, looks like an ear of corn. I don't know if that's because of the red or what, but <laughs> looks like an ear of corn. Okay, I think that's it. I'm gonna do a quick breakdown. Started with a sketch, did the line work, laid in some flats, figured out the color, and did the shading. I'm actually pretty happy with that. Um, before it gets published, I might do a little bit of uh, color grading with it to help make the brooms pop a little bit more against the background, but that's about it. Um, so, thank you for joining me on this pre-recorded adventure. I hope you enjoyed. I hope it wasn't too different from any other of the live streams. Um, or maybe, you know, difference can be okay. You can be interesting too. All right. Well, I've been Lucas with From Papal Court. And this has been Vernissage of the Court. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you next week.